watch me turn this into this. We're going to be painting and having some fun tonight, so stick around and let's get started. Okay, I don't see it, but that's okay. My name is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. Tonight we're going to be painting an AI version of something that I kind of dreamed up. I put it into the AI and then got a few results and let's get the reference photo up there so I can see. Yep, there we go. <laughs> don't think we did our intro tonight, but that's okay. Uh, we're trying to like a little different intro tonight, so that's why we kind of started this way. I'm going to clear off my palette here. I've got a 10 by 10 inch canvas and I'm going to be putting my paint straight onto the canvas tonight. And I'm going to first spray it with a little bit of water. There's our paint colors over to the side there. I'm going to start with some white for our sky. And welcome. If you are new to our channel, we're really glad to have you join us. I've got my husband, Mark, with me tonight. Hey there, buddy. He's man in chat back there. And uh, we're glad to have you join us. We're doing these tutorials. I've got over, oh, I don't know hundreds of tutorials that we've been doing over the last 10 years here on YouTube. So really a um, lot of choices for you if you're interested in learning to paint. That is my goal to kind of help you along in that process and figure out some tools, give you some tools and things to help you kind of bring your artistic vision to life. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to put out a few different paints, and I'll tell you which colors these are as I go. Got white up there in the sky. Put up some cobalt teal, a little bit of teal down here, turquoise down here, some burnt sienna in these two spots, phthalo green, yellow shade, really any green will do. I'm going to put out some Indian yellow hue. I don't need a ton of paint here, so I'm trying not to overdo because this is going to be a lot of paint to squish around here. And I'm going to put out some unbleached titanium down here at the bottom where I want a little bit more neutral. All right, so I think that'll get us started. This one's doxazine purple. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Okay. So I'm going to start with a filbert brush, so just a large brush to um, push the paint around on the canvas here. Get it wet. You always want to get your paint brushes wet. And I've also sprayed the canvas on the front. I'm going to spray it one more time just to give it a little bit more moisture to help push this paint around. I'm going to start with my light colors and move into my darker colors. Um, and again, this is a 10 by 10 inch canvas tonight that we're using, and this will just give us um, a nice background, but you can really do this for really any size canvas would work um, on something like this. We're going to be doing it very kind of loosey-goosey style. Uh, again, this was kind of an AI image that I... Um, dreamed up. You have to put in kind of a word prompt when you do that. And um, then I took the results of two or three photos that they gave me and put um, Photoshop them together. So this is not just the AI. This is kind of my own version of what the AI gave me. Um, a lot of controversy about AI right now. I don't really know. Um, I don't feel like... Uh, the AI is going to replace artists. People have asked me that. Are, is AI going to replace artists? I don't think so. I think we're always going to want to do things ourselves, right? We're always going to want to get, get our hands dirty and get in here. And I don't think that, I, I think the AI is taking um, human inspiration and um, giving life to that. So it's not, you're, we're always going to have to be involved in the process, I would think, um, at least a little bit. You know, people will, but my opinion. I don't know. 
And uh, I've heard another uh, person say that it was like copyright or it's like plagiarism or whatever. But I would say that any derivative art is has a little bit of that in it anyway. So art is all about um, taking something that already exists and making it better. So uh, I don't I don't think any of those arguments really work for me. So. All right, so you can see I'm getting a lot of paints on my brush here. I'm just moving around here and trying not to over blend. That's going to be the key, I think, with this, is just to kind of get the paint on here. And then I'm going to get a brush that doesn't have a ton of paint on it and smush the paint around a little bit. So I'm going to get another filbert here. This one is a eight filbert. And I'm going to pull from the light color down and back and forth. So I'm just going to kind of pull back and forth here. You can see how it's going to pick up some of these colors that I already have. And then I can just take a paper towel and wipe that off. I'm going to set this brush off to the side here. It's got a ton of paint on it still, so I may want to grab that later. How's it going? It's going great. It, what happened to the intro there? It played. It did play? Yes, I it, wasn't playing on mine. I know that it, you didn't see it on your side, but it did play. Weird. I know. I don't understand, but we'll figure that out. Okay. Interesting. If that's the only thing that goes wrong, we're doing good. That's true. We, we, we're trying a new... I, I, I'm always, like, really flustered when I have to do a new <laughs> intro. So I have like have a script and everything. I didn't look at it at all. <laughs> <laughs> she may or may not have spent the last hour writing it up. I did write, write it all up and not didn't use it. it at all because <laughs> I was so worried about that intro. <laughs> oh, well, you know. It worked. It works. We'll get it there. We're changing it up. so You were just you trying know. to change it up because, I don't know. We don't want to get in a rut. beat the algorithm. YouTube is got all these things that is saying you know do this for best practices so we're trying to you know we've been doing this for a long time and it's easy to get set on our ways I'm the worst about that so trying to not be resistant to change <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> it's not, not in my nature so I'm painting up the sides well with all this extra paint that's on this big brush here. Might as well just use it. But I really like the colors we've got going on here. I think I touched something over here. Um, and it definitely has a lot of, a lot going on. I've covered up a lot of where the lady's going to be, so I need to probably push back some of that sky back into that area. But we'll see. We'll get it going here. And hopefully this will be something you can take and kind of do your own version of. It's very um, impressionist style, very kind of dreamy mm -hmm. sky. So lots of different ways you can interpret something like this. Don't think my way is going to be the best way or the only way. I'm just kind of trying to give you some, some uh, tools for your toolbox, you know. Do your own thing with it. Okay, I think I'm going to let Mark take that and dry it. Good luck. It's got a lot of paint <laughs> on it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it on anything. Oh, well, I already got paint on me. Yeah, oh yeah, you're going to get paint on you. I've, I've got a bunch of paint all, all over everything here. Fun, messy, fun. All right, I'm going to put those in my water, clean those out. So... If you're new, hopefully you'll subscribe. I forgot to mention that. Let me show you what we worked on. We got a bird out there. Listen to that. He's chirping for us. This is what I worked on on um, Saturday. We did this for our patrons at the $5 level. Um, if you look down in the description there or just go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, there's um, 
you can sign up to join us and uh, get access to these kind of videos. They're just uh, more detailed videos. This one took a little over four hours, um, and we do those once th these kind of bonus videos once a month for our patrons as kind of a thank you for helping support our channel and for helping keep our YouTube videos free. They've been supporting us since 2017 and have um, really made a big difference in the way we do our videos. We've been able to upgrade, do palette cam, side cam, all that kind of thing. That was not, if you watch our older videos, <laughs> you will see how far. <laughs> Go to, go to a video from 2015 and, <laughs> and then you can see the difference. We've got a brand new uh, above head camera here that's 4K. Of course, we don't film in 4K because it's a little too um, hard on the live stream. But um, anyhow, we've got much better cameras and much better all of that. This is our video that we did last week. If you missed it, our little bee, he turned out so cute. Hope you guys check that one out. That one was actually a lot easier than it looks. So um, I definitely think that that one was probably the hardest part was the wings because they've got a lot going on, but the rest of it was very, very easy. Um, all right. Mark is still drying. <laughs> He's still... If you have questions during the live stream too, um, we do these live so that you can kind of see the whole process. You can see kind of start to finish. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of dead time like this when he's having to dry the paints because that's part of the whole thing. And that is part of the process when you do your own painting too. When you get to the point where you get yet that first layer down, you need to let it dry completely. If you don't let it dry completely and you start to paint over it immediately, um, your paints, the acrylics, once they start to dry, the under layers will start to dry and they will actually get really sticky and they'll stick to the paint that you're trying to put on that fresh paint will actually wash the sticky paint off the canvas it's basically like you're taking water um, and washing that kind of damp uh, slightly tacky paint off the canvas because it'll just stick right to your brush and wash right off of the canvas and then you'll end up with gummy paint and wet paint on your brush and as you try to kind of continue to try to paint and put it back down um, try to get it to stick it'll just kind of start lifting more and more of the thicker paints that are underneath and then you'll end up with a big gummy mess on your canvas and sometimes you'll like if you can get the paint to stick at all it'll be really weirdly textural it'll have these really thick parts and thin parts and it won't um, it, it just uh, kind of has a strange texture. So um, anyhow, drawing is a huge part of um, working with acrylics. You have to have a, a, like either patience and just wait or have a uh, blow dryer that you set onto a low heat um, setting and um, just dry out the paint a little bit quickly. Um, it doesn't take very long. And then once you've got a dry layer down, then you can put on more paint and more layers. We'll be putting on our flowers and more of our grasses and our girl on top of those layers that we first put down. Um, you can really layer as many layers of acrylic paint as you want. It's not like gouache or watercolor. Well, watercolor doesn't crack, but gouache will crack if you put too much of it down. It will um, crack off, but um, with acrylics that you don't have that problem. So you can put as many layers down as you want. We can put really thick layers down if we're using heavy body acrylics like I am. Um, you can also use thinner thinner acrylics if you prefer that. It really doesn't matter, but those thicker paints, thicker acrylics like the heavy body acrylics will give us a lot of texture here when we go to paint on here. So, all right, where is Mark? He's trying to dry that for me, I know. Anyhow, well, let me show you what we're working on in my $10 level. So I told you, I showed you the Lunar Moth that we did for our uh, $5 level members on Patreon. So our $10 level, level members get their own Thursday live stream. And we work on a project all month long in that um, level. And this is after two weeks. We've got at least two more weeks to finish it. It'll have some birds and birds and flowers and all kinds of fun things. Okay, there we go. Thank you. That did take a long time yes. to dry. <laughs> kind of figured. Oh, no, 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 please, 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 please. 
You know, like, dry, 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 please, dry, dry, dry. At least we got a bird friend with us. Yeah, he's been keeping me company here. Well, that's nice. Just keep chirping and making all kinds of noise. Okay, so let's draw out where we want to put our girl, and then we'll kind of know where to push back the flowers um, around her. So I want to put her right in here, and I'm just going to use regular chalk for this, I think. I actually might want to use white so that I don't have to worry about the color influencing anything. I definitely covered up all of my clouds too, so I probably want to put some clouds back in. So her hair is coming out like this. We've got the head. Um, her shoulders come down at an angle, and then her arms kind of come straight down. This is a very, like, you know, again, a simplified version of a person. Um, and then the hips come out, and then we've got this flowy dress right here. Right in here somewhere. And the dress comes out over here. I might move her up just a little bit, or maybe make her a little smaller, but that'll give us a, a head start there. Okay, so let me see. Let's go ahead and go back to this brush, this bigger brush here and I'm gonna get grab my white and if you missed it at the beginning of the video it, it listed all the colors that we've got on the palette here mm -hmm. so I didn't have to take the time to actually mention them one by one but I will mention them as I grab them on my palette here angel just cut their wings huh angel just cut their wings yeah <laughs> touch my little bell there um, okay so getting some white here and Got a little bit of that sky blue color, which was that cobalt teal. And I'm just going to kind of use this brush and push up some sort of clouds here. And I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and maybe a tiny bit of purple. And put in some of that in my clouds. I'm not worried about my grasses. I'll put those back in. Just kind of want some clouds going on up here. Getting some of the unbleached titanium, maybe a little bit of that phthalo blue. A little bit of that. And I don't need to do it exactly like my picture, so I do like, I did want a little bit more blue showing than was in the reference photo, so I'm going to leave that there like that, I think. And then get some more white here and just kind of try to put it kind of right around where her hair is going to be so that we have some nice light color behind where her hair is. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of start to lay in um, around her body. All right, and then I'm going to grab some green and some burnt sienna and some yellow, Indian yellow. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber too. I want that kind of neutral green. I really like the green in this. This is very like, it's not too vivid. So I'm gonna lay that back over now because we kind of covered some of that up with the clouds. So just kind of make that look a little bit better there and take some of this lighter color here and put it over here as well again kind of just covering over some of what we've got going on over there I'm going to get some teal and some green a little bit of purple Okay, so just kind of trying to transition there where I kind of covered up what we had done originally. So 
That looks pretty good, I think. Okay, there we go. Pushed it back a little bit. I kind of got a little heavy-handed with my grasses when I put that on. I was talking. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get a smaller brush here. This is the Four Filbert. And I'm going to get, I'm going to make a flesh tone. So I'm going to get a little bit of unbleached titanium, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And then maybe a little bit of cadmium yellow. And some white. Just kind of a neutral color. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. If you wanted a little bit more red, you can add just a tiny touch of magenta to it to pink it up. That burnt sienna and unbleached titanium gives a nice base with a little bit of burnt umber that gives kind of a nice just fleshy um, mid-tone color and then you can use the yellow or the pink to um, alter it just slightly, you know, however you prefer. All right, so I'm going to put her head up here. I'm just going to kind of mark out where I want her head to be somewhere in there and then her neck is going to be like right here and her shoulders coming down and then her back is visible on that dip of the dress okay and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put some arms down kind of two parts so that there's kind of a joint there at the elbow, just slight, round out the top a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to keep this wet here. And then let's make that kind of ochre color that's her dress. So I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber. You could use yellow oxide if you have it. That would probably be similar to what I'm going to be mixing here. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black. That'll help neutralize it too. Okay. Maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium to bring that color back up. That looks pretty close to what I want. So it's like a neutral brown. If you want, you can make this a, you know, a more pretty color. Like, you know, a color of any kind. This is kind of just a neutral just brown, so. But I like it. it it's gonna, we're gonna have lots of color in our flowers, so I think it's gonna be a good, like, neutral backdrop to the flowers. You don't want everything, like, super in your face bright you know okay so a little nip in the waist here off the shoulders bring that up just a little bit there and there and then come down and back out to where the arms are And I'm just kind of trying to put my brush strokes in so that they're sort of streaking down the, the direction that I'm seeing the dress flow. So I'm going to get some white and some ultramarine blue. That'll make a gray. So I've got this brown on my, my brush here. little frog isn't he? he hasn't been doing that all day as soon as I started talking we've been in here for the last I mean, four or five hours yeah easily and he has not said one word yeah. now all of a sudden this, this show's on and he's like got stuff to say I will be heard <laughs> singing <laughs> I'm so happy over the top of her, but there we go. All right, and then on the dress itself, there is this really pretty 
color. Let me, I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill in this area though first. Just go ahead and kind of pull this out and Yeah, this is going to work, I think. So I'm going to get the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine. A little bit of purple. And you may not need all these colors. I meant to mention that, too. If you don't have all these colors, don't sweat it. Just use what you've got. It doesn't have to be this exactly. That's the color right there. A little ultramarine blue and doxazine purple. I'm just going to use that to kind of give that glowing color, and I'm going to get some more of that, this color up here, and use it down here. Got both colors on my brush, so they're going to kind of blend and do interesting things here. Getting some burnt umber here, putting it down at the bottom. This is what I was talking about up here where I was saying, you know, if you put too much paint down, you can see right there where it's wanting to lift that paint was trying to dry underneath and so um, you know, I touched it and it, it's trying to lift. Okay, so there we go. Let me go ahead and get some of this gray that's up here and I want to use some of that in the dress too. This is, this had the turquoise and the Thalo blue in it. So, um, how many decades of experience should one have before they should tackle painting? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is that a question? Well, I mean, so, you know, according to the art police, you oh, have right. to be... You know, right, yeah, you have to... Classically trained and... Right, right, yeah. Eat dirt and... You gotta, and you gotta squalor, put in your... Right, you gotta put in your... Right. You truly you can't just watch a YouTube video and... Call yourself an artist. And learn how to paint. You, you are an artist as soon as you pick up a brush, so... You can call yourself an artist. You might not be like a professional artist, but you can definitely call yourself an artist, I would say, as soon as you pick up and start creating something. Um, and yes, like anybody can learn to paint. I think that that is one of the great lies that has been perpetuated on our society is that art is for the elite <laughs> and that you have to be you know, special classically trained. I'm, I did go to art school or not in art school, but I did study art in college, but I learned more after college and just practicing and trying, you know, and things than I ever did in a classroom. So I consider myself mostly self-taught. I learned the basics, but I never really learned. I actually dropped out of art class because I hated it so or not art class but painting class because I did not like it at all I was so frustrated by trying to use acrylics and do Bob Ross style art you can do Bob Ross style art with acrylics you just have to know the techniques so that's why I teach what I teach and how I teach it's because I don't want anybody to want to learn to paint want to be be painting and have so much frustration like I did um so things like waiting for the layers to dry. Huge, <laughs> huge game changer. 
and also um, just kind of you know uh, knowing knowing that you can layer your paints you will tend to um, not try to get it perfect on the first try you know that was one other thing that like Bob Ross does that you know is is not necessarily um, the way you we work in acrylics uh, you know he would take you know his oil paints and he, he did a wet on wet technique where he would um, you know have a complete painting in 15 minutes 20 minutes um, because he was doing all the layers back to back to back and um, we're not doing that with acrylics we're letting them dry in between so all right so just putting a little bit of that blue here I'm going to put a little bit of the blue on my arms too and then let's get a little bit more of the like burnt sienna color and I'm just going to put it up on the neck underneath where her hair is going to go and just use my finger to kind of blend that out a little bit okay so that's good I kind of like that just doing some swirly swishes of color there I think I want a little bit maybe of um, like a whitish um, yellow coming through here it'll make le like it look like sunlight coming through but I'm gonna let it dry first because I got too many layers down here so let's go ahead and put up put on her hair this will be one of the more fun parts of this tutorial I think um, and I'm just going to kind of try to get her head shape generally right and then start I'm just going to use this brush and flick it out to pull that paint out and if you're not getting thin enough you can just kind of switch to a liner brush or something like that um, one thing if you're using a liner brush just make sure you're adding lots of water to your paint because the liner brush needs water to be able to push that paint off. You've got really thick paint um, on a very thin brush. It's not going to come off really easily for you. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to kind of put it thick right around her head here. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to get some of the lighter color for sort of on top. So I'm going to do a sort of lighter color on top. So it looks like it's got a little bit of highlights up there. Maybe down through here too, along the edges. And then let's get that darker color. This is just burnt sienna, or burnt umber, I mean. You can use burnt sienna. You could use, if you wanted to do blonde, um, I do have a, a tutorial with blonde hair, but you would basically just use a little bit more yellow and white um, for blonde, but you would probably do a, a light brown background, so probably something like this for the background or like some burnt sienna mixed in um, to your yellow for your base layer and then do your yellow highlights on top. Okay, so that looks pretty good. can make it as flowy as you want. I might I might get out my liner brush later and do a few like curly cue type of things because I can't really do that with this brush. This straight brush here that I'm using. Um, all right so let's get I'm gonna get some white and I'm gonna go back around her and in the sky and just kind of give another layer there. I've got some of those grasses kind of showing through still. Doing some clouds here. And just kind of pushing out that paint using the tip of the brush to get those cloudy kind of like formations.
ultramarine blue, I mean. More white here, I ran out of white. How's it going? Did people like our new intro, our fan, our regular? I uh, wasn't didn't really talk about it. paying attention when it happened. I was oh. focusing. So while I told you that it did play, I did see it play on my iPad and in the YouTube studio box. And then I went back to check the beginning and it's not there on nope. the iPad. So I don't understand because I watched it. Oh. You got to watch it on OBS. That's what's going through. Right, but I saw it on the YouTube studio. I don't know. Like what's being sent to it. So anyway, I don't know. We'll do better next time. I'll do better next time. But yeah, no, I think everybody liked it. Good. We got a bunch of people here. Awesome. Some new faces. Yay. Well, that was nice. A lot of our unusual suspects. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been through a lot with us. <laughs> a lot of uh, yes. iterations of yeah. art. <laughs> a lot of... A lot of videos, a lot of changes over the years. We have grown with them. Yes. It's not just them learning, it's us. No, I've learned so much through doing these tutorials. I am a different artist than I was when I first started on YouTube, that is for sure. Especially just, I don't know. So I'm getting my yellows, and I like using the cobalt teal because it's also already got a lot of white in it so when I add it to the yellow it kind of gives it a nice color it's like a light green you know it's a really pretty sagey green I'm going to grab some of that skin tone and tone that down and I'm kind of going to use it around the bottom of her dress here and just sort of put some grasses kind of coming up over a little bit maybe And I'm taking that kind of smoky gray that I used, the burnt, burnt umber, uh, I'm sorry, burnt, yeah, burnt, see. Some burnt No, gray. burnt umber and ultramarine blue right here that I had mixed earlier. I was talking while we, you were talking about the thing, and I don't know if I mentioned mm -hmm. the colors, but hopefully you can see from the palette. I wonder if anybody's um, ever burnt ultramarine blue. I don't know. Mm. Just kind of putting my, trying to kind of transition between the dress and the grasses in a more natural way, but I don't think I've achieved it yet, so we'll keep going. Um, one thing, I, I got a comment this week from someone that tried one of the tutorials, I think it was the, um, I think it was the Blue Iris, which Granted, is a more advanced class. So this one is much more kind of, I think, beginner friendly because we're kind of using squishy brush strokes and um, it's a little bit more loose, loosely painted. Um, the more realistic you get, the a lot of times the more difficult um, it is. Um, and that iris, you know, was kind of in the more difficult category. So that's that being said, that though that the person did say that um, they gave up. You know, they were like, I tried painting this, I gave up, and painted over it. And um, I don't recommend doing that. I I recommend that you give it a minute, like. When you get frustrated, it's easy to just go, oh, I'm going to throw this out. And you can get to your, your painting to a point like this where it does not look good yet. It's not there. It looks bad. It's frustrating. It doesn't, doesn't look like you want it to, and you're not really sure how to get it there, and so you just give up and quit. And um, that is um, basically you're giving up in the ugly stage. I call it the ugly stage. Every single painting is going to have an ugly stage. So you just have to kind of know that going in and know that you're going to be frustrated at some point. You're going to want to paint over it at some point. But most of the time, when you get to that point, you're actually 
you've gotten enough layers down that you're actually much closer to the end of the painting. And really all it's going to take usually is just a few more layers until it starts looking great. But you have to pass through that ugly stage to get to the other side to the finished painting. And if you quit when you're in that ugly stage, you're never going to progress into a painting that's actually finished and completed. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're painting it. If you get super frustrated, set it aside, come back to it when you're not as frustrated when you have fresh eyes don't paint over it in the moment when you're frustrated that you you won't finish your painting you'll never finish a painting if every time you get to the ugly stage you paint over it and get and give up um, so that's just my two cents on that um, I understand it because I completely have been there and done that and I know um, you know I know the feeling but you just have to know when you're in it that it'll it will pass like if you keep on going it will pass you'll get through it and it'll get better but if you give up in the moment you won't ever get through it and you'll just you know have a, a bunch of random paintings that are not finished um so come back to it in another day you know give it a, give it time and um try again um that's my advice all right so making a green here that's got the burnt umber and the um, burnt sienna and the phthalo green and I still had a bunch of other colors on my brush so I'm just going to be kind of swapping around and mixing up some deliberately muddy greens these are not necessarily pretty greens in this picture they're browns um, so I'm but I'm I'm wanting to do this because these these browns are going to look really nice against our bright colors so I'm going to go ahead and put in these browns even though they're not necessarily pretty and normally you would say oh you know don't mix muddy colors but in this case we kind of want them to be sort of muddy so I'm going to get some orange orange with green makes a great muddy brown <laughs> makes great mud <laughs> take two complementary colors mix them together they're going to make mud so green and red or 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 uh a green and orange green and blue you're gonna get mud <laughs> all right so gonna go like this I want it really dark too around it very moody let's get some purple here and add that in that purple is gonna be the darkest kind of almost like a black for you I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue or um, some phthalo blue I mean and phthalo turquoise put some of that in down here and I'm using the corner of my brush here now and just going to kind of like I did on the hair. This is a four filbert, so it's going to be, you know, kind of a good medium sized brush. It's not too thick. And the the reason I'm using the these um, Aspen brushes is because they can really push the push the paint around better than um, better than a softer brush softer bristle brush so I'm going to get some of this mud over here that we created and I'm just going to kind of dab in some little dots and randomness happening now we're this is going to be kind of closer to our final layers here um, I think we're going to have this painting done in almost an hour. It's going to be really fast. And if you like this style and want to see more in this kind of style, in this looser style, I, I did have a conversation with somebody on Facebook um, uh, that messaged me. and she, she did one of my older tutorials, and she said she lo really liked the older ones because we did more easy tutorials, like more of these kind of style tutorials where they were very simplified and um, easy and so I don't do the easier ones as much anymore because they don't tend to do as well on YouTube so if you want to prove me wrong watch this video 20,000 <laughs> times and make sure you share it with all your friends if you want to see more <laughs> like this <laughs> and I will do more if they get views <laughs> I for sure will I, I do like doing these um, 
but the realistic stuff seems to tend to do better for some reason with my audience. So. Well, I think your audience has grown with you over the last that's true, eight yeah, to ten years. Yeah, I mean, true. And so you know they they wanted the the quote unquote more simplified items and easier, mm-hmm. and then they gained skill and confidence, and yeah, that's true. now want a little bit more challenges and. Right. I think you offer that on your Patreon, but here this is always a fun thing to do. Right. Okay, adding a little bit of red in here in her dress. This is just the magenta and burnt sienna with a little bit of unbleached titanium. I'm going to add a little bit of that in her hair too, I think. And then I am going to get a smaller uh, round brush here. This is the um, two liner and I'm gonna do some finer, I want some kind of more fine hairs going on in her hair. So I'm gonna get that brush, again, adding lots of water so that it is gonna come off the brush without any pressure. So I should be able to just kind of touch it and it'll come off on the canvas for me. Maybe get a little bit of I want kind of a gold color for some highlights. So I'm kind of getting Indian yellow hue. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna with the Indian yellow hue and some white. It's kind of reddish, but that might work for me. I just want kind of a lighter tone. It's similar to this one, which is what I used before. Um, might add just a little bit more burnt umber to it to neutralize it a little bit, but I want some kind of highlight colors on there, and then I'm gonna use that burnt umber. We have a, a question slash your opinion on okay. a brush style, if you want to take that now. or Yeah, okay. definitely. See if I can get this to work. So it says that Princeton has a fix-it brush. You don't, yes. you know, they say, I know Angela doesn't need it, but fix would it. appreciate uh-huh. your thoughts on it. Um, let me grab it out and... I'll Ooh, you got the see. one. I do. Nice. I think it's this one. That's it. <laughs> Not like you have like 300 brushes here. No, it's like this one. So it's a it's a really stiff bristle brush. It comes to a point. It's a round that has a point. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely think um, it's good for like blending and things, but you also can use it like if you put, um, if you put paint down and you need to um, go over over it and and kind of move it around you can kind of go in and push that paint around um, with it soften edges blend out blend things out um, so I I can use this I didn't I don't tend to grab it because I usually tend to use my blenders for that um, but they have a, a very similar um, stiff bristle. But this one is a little bit more pointy, and so it can kind of, you know, maybe get into uh, tighter spots um, if you need it. So, yeah, great. Great brush. Yeah, no, I definitely recommend it. I don't I don't tend to grab it very often, but, yeah, I do. I would definitely use it. Um, for certain, you know, for certain things. All 
right, so just adding a little bit of highlight on top there. I think that looks good. Let me go ahead and get a round brush now. This is the two round. I'm going to use some of some of that light brown just in the dress right here, kind of blending that out. I kind of want a softer transition right here on her hip, like so make it look like lights coming through. So I'm going to get a little bit of a, maybe get some of that gold and some white. This is close to unbleached titanium. I just mixed unbleached titanium there. <laughs> so I want a little bit more yellow maybe. So just kind of a light, light brown or brownish color. And I'm gonna kind of use that along the edges just to kind of soften some of that up and give it a little bit more look like, like there's some light poking through. Get some white here. Yeah, like that right there for sure. Some highlights on her dress. Okay. Here we go. So just a few little highlight spots on her dress there. And then I'm gonna go back to that blue ultramarine blue with purple that we used for the blue parts of the dress. Trying to get some white that doesn't have the yellow in it. And then let's blend out some of this kind of pinky color and I'm gonna mix it with the blue, that magenta color that we did for this area. And just kind of blend it in so that they don't look so separate. Like that, and then get some of the white. Do some light blue with the white. Right, I think we're good. At some point you kind of have to just go, okay, that's good enough, because otherwise you could end up with, you know, a lot of mud. <clears throat> sometimes we want it, sometimes we don't. <laughs> Getting a little bit of that burnt umber here. Just gonna kind of blend out my edges a little bit. Some of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our flowers. So for the large one up here, and you can make these as big or as little as you want. These ones are ginormous, but you don't have to have them. This feels like they're closer to us, you know, they're kind of putting her farther back. It gives her a little bit of sense of space and distance in the scene. So um, I like these big flowers, but if you want them, like I said, a little bit smaller, you can make them smaller, however, float your boat. All right, so I'm going to make kind of a light kind of peachy pink with my magenta and a little bit of Indian yellow hue and white. And let's go ahead and just kind of use this round brush and plop on a couple of flower-like shapes with a kind of pointy, pointy bottom. Get some of the lighter magenta and or darker magenta I mean and put that at the bottom of them like that okay let's go ahead and do one back here that's got a little bit more of a purpley tone like that and make a third one there 
wipe my brush out, get my peachy, lighter tone and put that at the top. And I'm doing this color while it's wet so I can kind of push that paint around. It's, it's, it's tricky because you tend to put a lot of more paint on, down than you would normally use, you know, like doing the background the way I did. Um, you're going to use up a lot more paint than you would normally use. So it looks good on camera, but, you know, if you want to control the paint a little bit more, that's probably not the way to do it. Um, you know, control what you're, what you've got going on and what colors you're using. Um, I don't know why I just did that. I want, I want a dark color there and I'm going to give it a couple of leaves around it. There we go. Okay. Let's get some phthalo blue and some white. Do a little bit of bright, bright blue and some spots. Throw in some blue over here. And I think I'm going to switch to a round, uh, a um, angle brush. Um, that one you could see the filbert was working. Um, fine for these brushes, these paints, but as soon as I start to do dots, you see how it kind of does these kind of interesting angular type of things, which are fine, but if I want more dots, like actual dots, I'm going to need either a round brush or I actually prefer an angle brush, and you'll see why here. Um, so I'm going to load it up with that kind of muddy brown color that we were using in her hair. And if I touch it straight down on the canvas, it just makes like almost a perfect round dot. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to get a little bit more of the Burnt Sienna and Indian Yellow Hue, kind of some orangey tones. And put some of those in and just little dots is all you need. Your eye is going to already look at the scene. It's going to interpret the colors and the situation and um, all you're going to need to do is put a few dots and your eye will will already go, okay, that's a flower. Like, without you having to do any detail at all. Just, just this green and the sky and the landscape, your eye already is like, okay, that's a landscape. And then you do a few dots and your eye's gonna go, okay, that's, your brain interprets the scene and situation and interprets it as flowers even when you haven't actually painted any individual blossoms of anything. It's pretty cool, the way our brains work. So I'm gonna do some blades of grass too. That I can do that with the angle brush. I can just kind of lay it down and pull up like I was doing with the filbert, but it actually is a little bit easier with this brush. <sighs> Look how fun that is. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of the orange and the Indian yellow hue, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of the this green that I've got going on here. My white. I think I might want a little bit brighter, so maybe a little bit more orange, maybe a tiny bit of pink. So it's kind of a neutral salmon pink color. Let's put some of that in. And if we want to, we can kind of, you know, make them look a little bit more flower-like by clustering them up, you know, in five or six dot or four dot, you know, patterns like that. I'm going to get some yellow in my orange, do a few dots with the yellow and orange, maybe around these other orange ones so it looks like they're kind of highlights or something. Really fun. Let's do a couple more. I want to do, I'm trying not to overdo. I like to overdo when I do flowers. so. 
this is my my um, talking to myself here, not you. Maybe you, if you have the same problem, but I tend to want to fill up the whole thing with all the same flowers everywhere, every time. So I have to deliberately pull myself back from the brink and remember to leave room for space and air and other things, not flowers. So I'm getting the dark turquoise here. I think it was turquoise and thala green and the burnt umber and burnt sienna here. I do like these little dot dot dots out into space. They feel fresh. Um, kind of like seed pods or something. You could do some bigger ones down here that are like pods, like poppies. Poppies have those kind of pod shapes that have a line that comes up over. So you could have something over here and have a line coming down over it. And <clears throat> for those who are watching live, uh, the bedding window will be closing in a few minutes regarding if there will be splatters. Oh yeah. So get sure. your pets in. Oh, <laughs> see, you just ruined it. I ruined it. Oh, sorry. Some highlights to some of these. That Darker. fixes in. I said this <laughs> painting is rigged. <laughs> uh, of course, there's going to be splatters. I mean, come on. Do you know me at all? Okay, so that's the title of an upcoming video. <laughs> there will be splatters. <laughs> here, mixing that with my magenta. Go darker right here where the base of the flower is. And then let's so uh, let's think where else we might want that color. So I'm thinking down here somewhere, maybe a little bit overlapping her dress slightly. Um, or I mean we could do another in here. I don't feel like we need so much of that though. There's some of it right here in the picture. And then over here, it's like kind of a white mixed in with it. Like a light pink. So we can just put a few little dabs of that pink, maybe some brighter magenta in a couple spots just to tie it in. Huh? In the reference photo, it looks like the lower left has some of that pinky color in it. Yeah, down here. Yeah, for sure. It's it's more of a, of a purple, though. I'm going to get a little bit of purple here. and. Okay, artist. Whatever. What, it's, it's not the same color. It's not this color. Well, it, there is some of that color in To that. some of us, it may be. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to mix those two together, so purple and the magenta, and yeah, some right there. There's some little aster type little ones in this area. And then let's go ahead and clean that out. Getting the pink and a little bit of this lighter color, and I'm going to use that in the centers of my aster type flowers, and maybe some of these other ones over here. here. 
Okay. And I want to get a little bit of this cobalt teal with the phthalo green just to add a few little spots of like a brighter green here and there. Just not a lot, but just like they'll really stand out against that darker, kind of more neutral, 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 neutralized palette of greens. Getting some more of that kind of kind of green gold almost color. Like yellow green. It's got a lot of orangey tone to it. There's a lot of the white flowers, so I need to add those in. And yeah, I mean, you can, at any point that you like it, just stop. It doesn't have to be like mine. You can, it's not going to be like mine because we're using different kinds of paints. We're do, using different kinds of, met, you know, mixtures and the way I'm holding my brush. If I did this three or four times, it would be different every time. It's just the, the nature of this kind of painting. So don't try to get it to look like, just like mine. Or just like the reference, I'm not doing it exactly like the reference. I'm just using it as a launching point, you know, to kind of give me some interesting backdrop, you know, for for this. So, Ooh, that's fun. Lots of white. Now, this is going to really attract attention, so you may want to, you know, tone it down first and do some neutral and then just pop in a couple whites on top. I'm going to do it over the top of her dress right in that area right there. Just a few little. This will help lead the eye around too so I can put these in areas to kind of help draw the eye around the painting. I'm going to kind of put some around her dress. There. Looks really pretty. Pretty happy with this. And I'm going to get some of the pink and add a lot of white to it. So just grab a little bit of pink and a lot of white and take it to another spot and clean it. Or, you know, mix it, I mean. Not clean it. I don't know why I, I said that. Um, there. And then I'm going to use that highlight some of my flowers up here. A little bit of highlights there. Throw on some highlights on some of these over here. I kind of like there's some sort of like get this orangey color. There's some like spiky type of oranges to kind of draw some lines here kind of make it look like they're a different type of flower than the rest of these all right maybe some little bit of more blue I think that that ultramarine blue and white mixture that's in her dress see a few spots of that purpley violet, blue violet color, periwinkle, whatever you want to call it. I've got a little bit of it, but I'm going to just dab in some of it. And we can go around, you know, around the green if you want to uh, help define some of the leafy shapes, it's up to you. But I think I'm gonna use this color to splatter. I think it'll be a nice color to splatter with. So I'm just gonna get my, my 
fan brush. I, I tend to like to f use the fan brush. I don't know. You can use a toothbrush, too, just to stiff bristle something. Um, add, add enough water to it that it kind of drips off fairly easy, easily like milk. And you should be able to just kind of tap it and it'll splatter. So let me go ahead and do oh, that. Oh, this like blueberry milk. <clears throat> Yeah, blueberry milk. It does look like that. <laughs> when, you, when you finish your blueberries mm. cereal and this, all the milk oh, is left. Oh, yep, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, dab off anything you don't want with a little damp towel. And I'm going to do a little bit of white splattering too, I think. But I'm really, I think we're pretty much done. Not too, I like it. Not too hard. We're just kind of keeping it simple tonight. So I got a question, and I uh -huh. had some super chats. So what do you want okay. first? Uh, questions, please. Okay. So somebody would like your opinion on okay. wood using wood boards as a canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wood's great. Um, I did it on, well, I, I haven't done it in a while. I used to work, work on exclusively on wood for the first, like, 10 years of my career. <laughs> That's all I worked mm -hmm. on. So going to canvas was actually really difficult because it was super textured and I didn't like it, but I got used to it. But I still do prefer a canvas that's smoother just because of that, I think. Um, I just really like a smoother texture to my the surface that I work on. So if you like that, then wood is definitely a great, um, a great option. Um, and they have um, cradled canvases. Can you grab that one? Um, I know Fredericks makes these cradled canvases on wood. Um, and then, of course, you can buy just wood itself and do it yourself. So, like these ones, um, they have actual canvas textured glued to them. But I also have some that are just plain wood, too. Um, and then um, I would use, like, a Baltic birch or something like that that doesn't have a lot of... You don't really want to use pine, necessarily, because I've used pine in the past. And pine will have resins in it that will come through your paint unless you seal it really well. Um, Baltic birch and maple and that kind of a softer, I don't know, certain woods like uh, oak tends to, I don't think, have a lot of the resins in it either. Um, so you just have to watch for that, kind of know your wood and what it's going to do. Um, but yeah, I've had pine, especially uh, older pieces um, that I painted that the pine resin would come through and dar darken the color um, in certain areas after over time. So just kind of watch for that. But yeah, no, wood's great. Great, okay. great option. All right. Well, then let's get to the super chat. Okay. Let me press the right button. Okay. Super chat. Oh, technical here, and I technical <laughs> myself out. Uh, let's see. The first super chat tonight was from Joy Lynn and has a pair of character doing a shaka sign. Saying, cool. sign saying, cool. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Very good. Groovy. Thank you, Joy Lynn, Thank for you. that. Very much. Then we had one from Cutley, and she says, this is beautiful. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Thank Cindy, you. Cindy. Yes. And then we have one from... Can you put Cutley? <laughs> well, that's that's what she put. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. I mean, that's her, that's her okay, username that's on the, there. Oh, got it, got it, got it. I don't okay. put it there. I was like, why are you calling her that? That's, that's <laughs> her screen name. <laughs> She's going to cut you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this one, Carol, her message didn't come through, but she said that she wants to thank you for all that you do Aww. and enjoy being with us for the last seven years with wow. more to come. Unbelievable. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Carol. Yes. And Cindy and Joy Lynn. Yeah, y'all, there are some ladies that I know by name after all these years. Yeah. It's amazing. I, one of these days we're going to have to get together and meet meet in person because I feel like I know y'all <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I think the IRS is after Cindy, so she changed her name. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I thought about some kind back, of back softening up some of those so they don't look so harsh there. Just you can see what it does when you out like if you put it on, especially if I put it on kind of watery, and just let it set in, into the canvas for a little bit and then wipe it off. I'm not wiping it, I'm actually just dabbing it, like setting the paper the paper towel on and then lifting straight up. It kind of gives it this ghosting effect where it's a little bit darker around it and lighter on the inside. It's really pretty. All right, there's our girl walking through the flowers. I don't know. Uh, I like it. It's different from the AI for sure. We did a little bit different colors. I cannot help myself. I still <laughs> had to go way dark, way way more green than I did not do the muddy muddy greens that she has, or the AI. I call it she. <laughs> the, uh, she has in the AI version. Um, I did it a little bit more um, bright colors. That's just me, I guess. Yeah, it's not as moody. I can't help it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it turned out fun. So I hope I want to see your guys' version. So be sure to share those with me. Um, if you paint that, I've got links down in my social media down in the description, as well as places to find all of the um, art supplies that we used in today's video and links to that. Um, also check out my uh, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art if you want the traceable for this. I'll have it traceable up probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, also I showed you the you know other bonus video and we'll be working on that bird feeders um, painting that I showed mm. you earlier um, on Thursday with my $10 patrons. Um, also, our new website is playing my Patreon videos. So Ooh. thankfulart.com. Um, it's the preview site still. So the old site um, is still the one that's public. But if you go to thankfulart.com, you can sign up for our newsletter and be the first to know when our new website is public. Ooh. We'll be... Um, we send out a newsletter just before the videos every Tuesday um, just to give you the links, make it easier for you to find what we're doing and keep up with all of the good stuff going on. So I'm really excited about our new website. It's amazing. And um, we've worked really, really hard on it. We're probably going to do a live stream probably early in August um, next week. Speaking of excited, we're going to be doing a, it looks like a kind of a funky wildflower painting, but we're going to be using, pulling out all of our mixed media stuff. So we're going to grab some watercolors and pencils and some acrylic paints and maybe some inks. I don't know. We're going to do um, just experiment together next week. So I hope you join me for that. And um, as always, thank you to all our patrons and everybody who make these videos possible and free for the public. Our patrons have supported us faithfully for so many years, and we so appreciate you guys. Um, and, um, yeah, well, thank you so much. I'm going to sign this, and then we can head out. And I'm going to get some dinner. I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> I was working so hard on my script that I didn't use, <laughs> I didn't, eat, didn't eat any dinner. <laughs> you can you can see I have lots of notes right here. <laughs> thing filled up. I think I used the first two sentences and then just went, winged it after that. And yeah, so if you're like, well, she sounds really awkward in the beginning. Yeah, I did, but that's all right. We're trying new things, so... <laughs> got to keep growing and trying new things all right thank you guys so much for hanging in there with us and we will see you next week hopefully all right bye-bye <laughs>